Hey y'all and welcome back to the Book of Brianna, a podcast. I am your host, Dr. Brianna Whiteside and welcome to the end of February. Y'all know February said loose me and let me go and that is exactly what we did because we are just a few short days from March and since it is the end of the month, I want to invite you to do a quick recap. Look back over the last two months and I want you to honestly Ask yourself, did I accomplish what I said I was going to accomplish before we clocked into 2024? Because it's easy, right? It's easy to have these lofty goals. It's easy to have these big dreams. The issue is charting your way to the goal and the dream. And in order for this to be your year, I always say this, you have to master your month, which means that you have to master your week which means you have to master your day and your hours. And so take a second, be reflective, be honest. I'm not telling you to beat yourself up. I'm saying be honest and ask yourself, did I do what I said I was going to do? Because if you don't keep your word to you, how do you, one, expect to keep your word to other people? But two, how do you expect people to keep their words to you. In today's video, I want to wrap up our Unstoppable series. This has been an incredible month. This has been a month where we have decided to be unstoppable. We have decided to partner with God. We've decided to stop bullying ourselves. We've decided to give ourselves a chance. And I want to wrap this month up with a moment of reflection and tell you, like a story time, tell you what happened to me that I did not expect to happen at all. If you've been journeying with me, you know that I turned in my resignation at the end of December, or at the beginning of December, and then I told you all about the journey in January. What I didn't expect to happen, though, was for me to step into a new uh, realm of confidence. I didn't expect it. Now, I generally think that I am a confident person. I think that, you know, I am someone who is a self-motivated person, someone who believes in herself like Kanye believes in Kanye. So... It wasn't that I didn't believe in myself before. I've generally always believed in myself to a certain extent, but this decision has taken my belief to an all time high. And it's not just a belief in myself, it is a confidence in God. I didn't think I needed it in the vein of transparency. I thought I was good. I thought that, you know, I'm obedient. I ain't gotta worry about this, woo. No, y'all, I wasn't <laughs> that confident. I didn't realize it, which is also one of the reasons why you saw me breaking down on a podcast in January. It wasn't just I was losing something. It wasn't just that I had to give up something, but I also started to realize who my confidence was in. It wasn't in God. It was in myself. My confidence was in my, my job. My confidence was in so many external things. So when God just go like, go ahead now, go and get out of there, what he was also inviting me into was a new realm of confidence, a new realm of elevation. And we generally, we don't think of that. You know, when God calls us out of something, we, we struggle with the grief of it. And I think that is your human um, experience, right? That is your human right to struggle with it. But we also have to get to a place where we then begin to realize he's not just trying to take it to, from us. He's trying to get us to something. And so every perceived step back, this is perception, right? We, we do need to have the right perception. But every perceived step back when God says, give me this, is ultimately an opportunity to step into greater. And I truly believe that. And I always say it like, it, how else will your latter days be greater than your former days unless you give up the former days, the memories of the former thing, right? Rem don't remember the past. You have to be willing to step forward. And this goes into a 5784 video that I did back in September of 2023. We believe that we are in the Jewish year of the open door. Well, a lot of people don't know how to get in the door. It's not enough for God to open a door if you're unwilling or unprepared to walk into it, if you don't have strategy to understand how to move into it, but also you are unwilling to walk into the open door. So the door can be open all year and you could still stand at the door and not cross the threshold. And when God is 
seemingly asking you to do something that you don't want to do, it's always an invitation into more. It's an invitation to come further into the abundant life. Your Bible says that he, he came and he died to give us a life of abundance, that much more abundantly, right? But you get to decide if you want the abundant life or not. You get to decide how well you want to live your days on this earth. This is your free will. A lot of us don't think of it like that. A lot of us, you know, just think of like, oh, it's just some mystical thing. It's something that is hard. No, it's not hard to comprehend. You have to decide, one, to agree with God, two, partner your verbal agreement with actionable steps, and three, decide to move into the next. The future is for the decided. The future is yours. But once you decide that you don't want that future, guess what? God's not going to force you to take it. It's yours. He's not going to force it upon you. And I need you to remember that. I need you to understand that. And so when God asked me to leave my career after I finished crying, spending and farting, after I got out of over my emotions, I said, okay, this is an opportunity. This is going to set you up. You're going to have, you're about to step into the greatest season of your life. And I had to really believe that and decide it. So now when people ask me, like, how are you dealing with, you know, come in my career? That sounds like something else. How are you dealing with stepping out of your career? How are you dealing with the, you know, four months that you have left um, in this season of your life? How are you feeling? And I'm like, I honestly haven't thought much about it. Once I decided that this is what I'm going to have to do. Once I decided that, you know, okay, this is an opportunity. I haven't looked on the former things and granted my career is still ongoing. It's not former in the, you know, general sense in the technical sense, but it is this thing that is coming to a close. And so I can either stare at the door that's closing or cast all of my attention to the door that is open and that I am uh, actively walking towards. And so as I've been actively walking towards, as I've been showing up on YouTube more, even though it's been tiring, as I've been maintaining my career, teaching, doing all the things that is required of me, building a company, moving in purpose, all those things. As I've been doing all those things, y'all, I have like stepped into a swim or swim season. And I say swim is a swim because generally we all say sink or swim. Sinking is not an option for me. No, this isn't an option. This is a swim or swim thing. And so once you take sinking off the table, heaven and earth will conspire to bring you all of the destiny opportunities available to you. But you have to continue to move forward. And so I didn't expect to be so confident, not only in myself, but in God. I, 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 I tapped into a new realm of confidence. I tapped into a new realm of understanding, of trust. Okay, let's talk about trust. Because when you come from where I come from and you have certain experience and, you know, God as a father don't sit too right with you, it's hard to trust him as a father. But we've been doing this work to untangle my skewed perception of fathers. And we've been doing this work, you know, for me to fully embrace and step into the woman he's created to me to be, but also the daughter he created me to be. It's been so freeing, y'all. I'm not going to say it's been easy, but it's been so freeing because I feel like a part of myself that was locked down, a part of myself that was so worrisome and filled with worry and anxiety has gone. Like at one point, the, the pressure was at an all time high. Now it's like it's come down and it's like, this wasn't my idea anyway. This is my life ain't even mine. It's not even my own. So I'm just gonna have to take the pressure off of myself and just partner with heaven and do my part. And doing my part has allowed me to shift focus. It's allowed me to shift my energy. Um, it's allowed me to advance very rapidly in ways that I thought would have taken me longer. You know what I'm saying? And when I want, what I'm trying to get you to understand is I don't want you to take for granted the power of belief, the power of your decision. We, we hear it often. What you believe about yourself matters, right? You have, the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If you believe you can do it, you're right. If you believe you can't do it, you're right. Either way, you're right. 
And that is the scary part because it's not a God thing. It is a you thing. God did everything he was going to do on his, he, he rested on the seventh day. Jesus already did everything he was going to do. He ain't going back on the cross. He already off. He in heaven. The Holy Spirit is doing his part, but you, you get to decide. You get to decide, am I going to be unstoppable or am I going to let all of the external things that I've gone through, that I'm walking through, that are, you know, loud in my life, am I going to let them be the truth? The Bible asks you, whose report will you believe? Are you going to believe the report of the Lord or are you going to believe the cultural reports that have stolen your future from you for so many years? In a previous podcast, I told you to break up a culture. Sometimes the culture is the problem and we can become so married to the culture that we won't even break up with it. But let me tell you, can I tell you something? God died for your abundant life before the culture laid claim to you. It is only when you agree with the culture that you tie up what God wants to do with you because you are, you have a legal right. You get to decide, am I going to do this? Cause it's free will. Or am I not going to do this? Am I going to break up with the culture or am I going to let the culture, you know, dictate my life? Are you going to continue to let the past things that have already happened to you continue to happen to you in your mind? That's something that my therapist and I had to work out a few months ago. There, trauma can live in your body, right? We know this. And it can tell you and it can communicate because your brain is powerful. It can create all of these images and, you know, different types of things. And your brain can communicate that this trauma is still happening, though the event has passed. This is an imagination. It happened to you. You're not going through it, but your mind is telling you that you're reliving it now. You're living it right now. And it's not true. Once you decide that this has happened, I am no longer going to be a victim of this thing. I'm no longer going to let it um, dictate to me my future and my progress and what I'm capable of, right? You get to change your mind and have a different life. You do. But until you decide that you want more, you're never going to come up with more. You're not going to take the opportunities that are given to you to step into more. You're never going to do it. And... I think it's a great struggle. It's a great disservice to the kingdom and to yourself that you only have one life and that you will allow something in the past to steal what's ahead of you. Your latter days will be greater than your former days. The Bible also says that for the joy that was set before him, Christ endured the cross. So you have to look at what is in the future. What do you want? Not what you don't want, because it's so funny. And I, sometimes I struggle with this too when someone asks me, you know, so what are you looking for when you're doing blah, 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 blah? Well, I can automatically tell you what I'm not looking for, but I have to be able to articulate what I am looking for. This is what I'm looking for. This is what I value, not this is what I don't want to happen. This is what I'm afraid to happen because you want to know why your brain is so powerful. It will start to pull in those experiences that you say you don't want. So we are so vocal to say what we don't want, but we're not as vocal to verbalize what we do want. And then we're struggling and we're trying to figure out like, why does this thing keep happening to me? I said, I don't want it. Well, this is the only thing you're rehearsing. This is the only thing you're looking for. You're only looking for the red flags. You're not looking for the green flags. And it's unfortunate, right? It is so unfortunate, but you know, you can retrain your brain. You can, you know, grow new neural pathways because you're that powerful. God gave you so much power and we generally don't use it. One, we haven't been taught to use it, but two, we feel uncomfortable using it <laughs> and it is the wildest thing, but I get it. This is conditioning. This is culture. This is all the things. And I want to let you know that the moment you decide you want more, you can have more. The moment you decide that you want to become unstoppable, you can. It's when those external things start talking to you that you start believing that you can't. Just like a child, this is what's coming before me. When you ask a kid what they want to do, sometimes the kid wants to do 50, 11 things, right? And they want to be a superhero. They want to be a doctor. They want to be an astronaut. They want to be all these things. And some adult will say, well, you can't be all those things. You got to choose one. You can't do all of these things you want to do, you have to choose one. You have to put yourself into a box. 
And not only does an adult say that who may be in the family, the school system does that. The school system teaches you to play it safe, to choose one thing, to go out at the only one path when God made you multidimensional. And because of these external voices, the child generally tries to go for one thing and they never get to, sometimes, they never get to become what they wanted to be when they grow up. When people ask me, Brianna, what did you want to be when you grew up? I was like, a teacher. I knew it. When I was in the second grade, I wanted to be a teacher. And guess what I became? A teacher, right? And it has looked differently in every season. But I knew, without a shadow of a doubt, this is what I, I'm drawn to. This is what I like. Didn't know why I liked it and why I was drawn to it at the time, but I just knew this is what I want to do. And no one discouraged it. No, let me not say that. Some people did discourage it. Teachers don't make a lot of money. Teachers don't do da 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 da. Teacher da 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 da. And from their experience, they were right. But guess what? There wasn't a fact. That was their truth. That wasn't the truth. Because I do make great money. And I am always teaching. And I can create generational wealth by teaching, by sharing information. You're here because I'm sharing information with you. And though people may have said those things and, you know, there was a part of my life, I think I made it was maybe in high school where I was like, okay, well, maybe I can be a journalist, but it didn't feel right. It didn't sit right. It didn't feel like that's really what I wanted to do. And I switched back. I changed my mind. I said, no, teaching is the way. This is what you're supposed to do. And this is what I did. But it was the power of a thought. The power of belief that, no, I hear what y'all saying, but I have to go with what I know to be true. And it was it's in that knowing that I've done everything that I've done, I decided. You don't get out the hood without deciding to get out the hood. Y'all know, single parent, let me give you the steps. My mother was a single parent, had me at 17. Dad wasn't really around. I was raised in the inner city, the hood of Chicago. Sometimes I still come out. I used to get jumped on because girls were jealous that I was pretty. I went to private school up until fourth grade and then I went to public school, no sixth grade. Then I went to public school and they used to try to fight me because I was pretty. I wasn't ghetto. I was raised in a hood, but I wasn't hood because you know, my mom was strict. I go away to school. Finally, I get out. Every, I get into one high school, go through high school. They don't like me for, I didn't really fit in, but you know, and I, I decided to go away to school. First generation graduate, first person to leave Chicago for real in my family. And I did it because, <clears throat> I'm getting choked up here. I did it because I wanted more. I didn't know how to get more. Let me get some tissue. Y'all, I'm sorry. I did not expect, I did not expect to tear up. I did not expect to tear up like this, but I didn't know how to get more, but I know I wanted more. And I gave myself a chance to have more. And it was met with resistance. And I didn't have as many opportunities that everyone else had. But I knew that my life was my life. I knew that this was mine. And I had to decide, ooh, child. I'm trying not to mess my makeup up because I'm about to, I gotta go somewhere. I had to decide that I was gonna make the most out of my situation. It wasn't enough for me to wish that I had another story I didn't. This was my story. It wasn't enough that for me to try to hope and, you know, complain about what I didn't have. I wasn't raised with a lot, but I was raised with what I what I needed. And I decided that I wanted more and I kept going after it. And I kept I was it was grit. I kept doing it and I kept moving forward. I kept trying to find ways because I knew I couldn't go back to the hood. If I went back to the hood, I was gonna get trapped. It was dangerous. I don't know if y'all ever been raised in the hood, but I was. I wasn't come from the suburbs. Don't let this academic training, this refined version of me fool you. Raised in the hood. Gangbangers running up in the crib, beating someone almost to death, witnessing that. I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't have what I have, but I have it because of God's grace and my decisions. God's grace and my decisions. Sometimes you're going to have to make decisions that other people may not have made, but you're going to have to know, I'm going to give myself a chance here. And that's what I did. And it wasn't without failure. 
and it wasn't without struggle and it wasn't without wondering, am I ever going to make it? Is it ever going to happen for me? But I had to find out. I had to find out because I already saw what I had and what I was born into. And I didn't want that for my life. And so because I didn't want that for my life, I started going in another way. It was delayed gratification and it was hard and it was thankless labor. And it felt like I felt like giving up more times than not. And, I, and people talked about me and all the things, but it didn't matter because in my heart, I knew I wanted more in my heart. I knew. And this is why it's important to speak life over your children, because, you know, I told you all what my mom used to say to me when I was young. You are destined for greatness. I didn't know what greatness was, but it got inside of me. And the moments when I wanted to quit and the moments when I wanted to give up, you are destined for greatness. And that is what keeps me going. The promise that I am destined for greatness, the promise that I am supposed to have an abundant life as a believer, the promise that I am safe in the obedience of God, even if it doesn't feel safe. And so when I resigned from my career, and I removed myself from the institutional backing and solely depended on the backing of heaven, something changed. Just because you don't have the backing of the world or the institution does not mean that you don't have the backing of the heavenly hosts. You don't have the backing of the I am. And when I traded that backing of my institution for the backing of God, something unlocked within me. Another level unlocked. A ceiling had been removed. And I can't say it would have happened had I stayed small, had I decided to take the easy route. I cannot say that I would not be locked down, but I'm not locked. I feel like a freedom has been given to me and this is obedience. I obeyed my way into a, a deliverance that didn't require coughing and spitting out, you know, what happens when you get delivered. It didn't require that I obeyed. I walked my way into a deliverance out of an old season, out of a lineage, out of a line, out of a narrative. I did. And you can too. You can decide to become unstoppable. And heaven will conspire with earth to bring it to pass. But it's only if you decide that you want it. It's all hinging on you. It's not hinging on God. It's hinging on you. And I want you to remember that you are more powerful than you know. And that God has greatness in store for you if you want it. If you don't want it, that's fine. He won't force it on you. But if you do, it's available to you. Daily, he loads you with benefits. You can have it. You can have the abundant life. And it starts with you deciding to be unstoppable. I hope this has encouraged you. I hope this has given you something to think about. I hope this has challenged you to stop playing it safe. To go after what God says he has for you. And as I continue to live my life as a witness and before you, I want you to know that this is possible for you too. So if this has encouraged you, if this is giving you something to think about, I want to ask you to like the video, share it with a friend, and leave me a comment below because we have to become unstoppable together. And I'm committed to doing my part. And I hope you're committed to doing your part as well. I will see you soon in another installment of the book of Brianna. We're entering into March. It's the last month of Q1. What are you going to do with it? I'll talk to you soon. Bye.